Right in Austria, so you are you you have yep. second coffee already. <laughs> yeah, it's almost nine o'clock. It's eight forty-five a.m. Pacific time. So it's breakfast time in California. Exactly. Okay. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Ryan Jenkins. Ryan's been a friend for a long time. He's been at many, many maker fairs. He worked at the Exploratorium. He started his own company, Wonderful Idea Co. He's done some corporate work with me that's just been amazing to take some of those corporate people out of their headspace and get them playing. And without further ado, Ryan, it's yours. Great, thanks so much, Sherry. Thanks for inviting me. And um, I'm really excited to be here and hopefully make some music and build together. So um, as Sherry said, my name is Ryan Jenkins. Um, I have a small uh, company called Wonderful Idea Co. And for this project, I also um, have gotten a lot of inspiration and working as well from uh, a group in the UK called Cabaret Mechanical Theater. Uh, that builds automata. I'm zooming in from Germany. I'm here in uh, Freiburg in Breisgau in the southwest of Germany. Um, and today we'll be experimenting with building sound automata. Um, I'm gonna explain a little bit what that means, um, show some examples. And um, after I do that, I would love it if people could uh, turn on your cameras, uh, hopefully, people, some of you have collected some supplies ahead of time. Um, I'll go over in a bit some of the materials that we are going to be building and working with today. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested in um, building and tinkering together so that we can um, learn from each other and get some ideas. So um, yes, yeah, so before we get started, I just wanted to say a little bit about what are automata. Um, like I said, I've been inspired a lot by the Cabaret Mechanical Theater, which is a group of artists in the UK. And if I can share my screen, I just wanted to show a couple um, examples of automata that Cabaret Mechanical Theater artists have made that inspired me, especially when it has to do with sound. So um, hopefully you can hear these. Here's one by Paul Spooner called Gunfight at the Grassy Knoll. So you can see this physical way of making a sound that also impacts the story. Um, here's another one by Paul Spooner. Um, let's start at the beginning called Lost in Translation. And um, one more by another artist called Martin Smith, um, who made this heart beating machine. Cool. So these are some, um, let's say high ceiling examples of uh, how you can create a device to make sound and tell a story. Today, we'll be experimenting with making our own versions of these with materials that we can find around the house. I'll share a few more of those examples in a second, but um, let me just show you the materials that we'll be working with today. Um, and hopefully you can find some of these at your, um, at your place. So the first thing that we'll be using is um, 
something for a base of the automata. So uh, I think for mine, I'm going to use a box. So um, something from a pack of tea. So this is going to kind of give my automata some form. We also sometimes use wooden blocks. Um, and if you know you really don't have anything else, uh, actually, these work really well. A uh, toilet paper tube is a great base. The mechanism that I'm going to show today is called a crank slider mechanism. And so to make that, we're going to need some wire. Uh, yes, I can kind of get it to go on my camera there. We're using 18 gauge stainless steel wire. If you don't have um, if you don't have that available, sometimes I'd like to just um, unwind a paper clip, and that provides uh, some great wire for our machines. Um, it's helpful to have some uh, some straws of different sizes and um, uh, diameters, so we can use those as guides to sort of control the movement of our mechanisms. Um, we need some sort of material that can move and slide. So the one I like to use the best, but it's a little bit rare, is this kind of thick millimeter, uh, thick six millimeter craft foam. So this is a type of foam that um, it, it works really well because it kind of can slide but stay in place. If you don't have that, um, I like to cut a piece of a wine cork can work really well, or um, a little uh, bit of rubber eraser is also good for that. And the last thing we'll need is um, some sort of sound making material. So like I have different uh, jingle bells, um, marbles. Also um, another one of the ones I was working on has this kind of plastic takeout container that I think could be sort of like a um, washboard sound. Um, also something that you can tap against, uh, like a metal lid or a pot. That might be something that could inspire our, uh, our automata. There's just a couple tools that, uh, as well, we like to use. Um, so uh, to bend the wire, I like to use these round nose pliers. Um, to cut the wire, you can use these uh, Snip, snippers, wire snips, or scissors also works fine for that. Um, we can use uh, tape like masking tape, but also um, a hot glue gun is helpful. So if you have a hot glue gun um, available, that's, that's great as well. So I'm just curious, like maybe virtually or in the chat, people can raise their hands or um, just mention if you also have these materials to build with. I'm also okay if you uh, turn on your sound as well. Yay, someone, Loriano is raising, raising his hand, yay. And, and uh, Kat is, is ready, so okay, great. So um, for some of you, if, if you're here, uh, you know, and Barb is ready, yes, great, awesome. So thanks so much for some of you for bringing some of the materials uh, together as well. So um, like I said, uh, the mechanism that um, I would like to work on and build today is um, a crank slider mechanism. And so basically what this one does is it takes the rotational motion of uh, the spinning handle and it turns it into a reciprocating motion or an up and down or side to side motion. So, like I said, there's, and you could see in the uh, automata that we were working with before, there's so many different ways you can make sound with these physical mechanisms. But um, today we're gonna be working with the, the crank slider mechanism. So the first step is to um, get a piece of wire. Uh, I don't know, maybe about 10 centimeters long. You know, it kind of depends on, uh, you know, what, uh, what, um, size of automata you're working with. Um, and basically we're going to uh, connect it to our box. So I'm gonna connect it to my um, tea container. And because I'm, you know, sometimes when you're tinkering, it's really helpful to uh, kind of make these things be able to be changed and um, remixed. I'm just gonna tape on a straw to the, um, tea container, and that's gonna give me like a little space that I can put my wire in. Um, when I'm working, at least at first, like I don't like to 
fully um, change the automata because, or sorry, fully change or cut or hot glue the materials yet, because, you know, you always might want to um, uh, make it different. But so I'm just gonna tape uh, a straw to the top of the tea container. You also could, um, like for example, in this one that I've made, uh, I kind of hot glued a straw going all the way through the toilet paper tube. That works as well. I'll show you some other examples in a bit. But once you have your straw attached to your base in some way, um, you're gonna wanna just thread the wire through. So thread the wire through the straw. So it's kind of a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other side. On one side, um, I'm gonna make a handle or a crank, something that I can turn. So I just kind of bend the wire up and bend the wire over. So now I have kind of a, a handle here that I can turn. And on the other side, I want a little um, U-shape or a place where I can fit my, um, my uh, flexible piece. So um, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect and um, you, know, you can experiment, but for mine, I'm just gonna make a little U here. And that's where my little, um, my little uh, foam piece is gonna be. So if you can see, it's a little bit hard on the screen, but um, on one side, uh, move my thing a little bit. On one side, I have a little L shape, which is my handle. And on the other side, I have a little U shape, which is uh, where I can put my um, craft piece of foam. So, and you can see like when I'm spinning this now, the other piece is moving up and down, side to side. How are you doing? Liana, you have a question? Yeah, cool, looking good, awesome. Very nice, very nice. So, um, yay, cool, and Kat, yes, looking good, cool. So um, the next thing to do is to um, make our little uh, piece that's technically called a vertical rod. And so to do that, I'm gonna put the um, piece of wire into whatever flexible material I have. This is with the craft foam, but um, maybe for fun, I'm gonna put it into the, um, into the top of my wine cork like this. So basically I have a piece of wire with a um, flexible piece and it's kind of stuck in the side. And basically that is gonna go onto the U shape of my automata. So let me thread it in and then maybe I'll move my camera so I can see it. We can see it a little bit better. So now, basically I have this U shape and there's a um, flexible piece. In this case, it's the, the uh, wine cork. And so when I turn my handle, this is gonna move up and down, but it's gonna be able to rotate. So it still can, um, you know, it's not gonna get stuck as we move it. You could see even this might make an interesting sound. I don't know if I can see, but like even this, like this little piece of wire is moving on the table. And it's kind of interesting already. Like I might just for fun, put this little piece here and like, can you hear that? I'm already getting a bit of a percussion sound just by um, letting this wire, this vertical rod piece, move around on the table. And I also think these moments are really important to closely observe what's going on with your machine. I mean, I just was looking at this randomly and I, I think it's this combination of the cardboard on my table and um, the wire, but it kind of waits and then flings, like it kind of boom, like knocks it like a little flipper. So. I think as you're turning and building your automata, watch how it's moving and seeing like, is it a, you know, is it a percussion note? Is it something that's like slowly moving back and forth? Because you can use that as part of your machine, um, you know, to decide, is it going to ring a bell or hit a drum or, um, you know, uh, move over a, a ridge surface like this, like a washboard sound. 
this is cool, but I want to have a little bit more control of my automata. So the last step is to make a guide or a limiter for the machine. And there's, again, many ways of doing that. The Maybe the one I'll show is just to take a third piece of wire and I'm going to make a loop at the end. So I'm going to use my um, pliers and just cut a loop at one end. So basically I have a wire with a, yep, a, a small loop about, you know, a few millimeters in diameter and um, this piece like this. I can thread my um, vertical rod wire through that, um, through that loop. And again, I'm just gonna tape it on because I you know, don't wanna do anything too permanent yet. So I'm gonna tape on this um, limiter piece. And so now, let me see if I can move this up a little bit. So now with this crank slider mechanism, I'm gonna handle it, move the handle, spin the handle. So you can see like it's moving up and down and the placement and the direction of this limiter is really the main piece that's going to decide how this is moving. So if you move it a little bit closer to the, um, to the, to the crankshaft, it should um, have more of an up and down motion. You can see now like I have really a big up and down motion on mine, which again, like I think this could be really interesting for banging down, hitting a drum. If you move this limiter way up to the front, it should be a bit more of a um, back and forth motion. You have a little bit less of an up and down. So again, like as you're building, the placement of this uh, loop or this limiter is gonna make a really big difference of how your machine moves. I think for mine, I want to have it ring a bell so I want to have a lot of up and down motion in, in my machine. So to do that, I'm going to move, oops, <laughs> I'm going to move this wire close to where the crank, uh, where the handle is. And um, I think that will give me a bit more of an up and down motion. Let me uh, move my camera down. How, how, are, uh, how are the builders doing? Loriano, how are you doing here? Well, well, can you see this? Let's see. Yeah, 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 looking good. My limiter is wow. very... It's very really cool. moving. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, I think that's really nice. That's kind of what, what Maya was doing too, like really moving up and down a lot. And so for me, I think this could be a good, you know, to ring a bell, to drop down. Like I said, I really think that as you're building, you know, a really good thing about this stainless steel wire is that it's, easy to move and easy to put in, um, you know, in any direction. And so I would just make small changes, notice what happens, and then that could make a big difference of how your machine moves and works. Um, cool. So I'm just going to, for this one, um, as kind of a quick example, I'm just going to add a small um, bell, like a jingle bell at the end of mine to see how that works. And again, I'm just going to take uh, my pliers and add a little loop on one end. So now I have, oops, well, maybe this is a bit too heavy. Ha ha ha. Oh, hey, it kind of worked. This one I'm gonna have, this, uh, yeah, this is another thing that I think is important with, you know, as you're building your automata, you might notice the weight of the thing that you want to have build um, mm -hmm. can make a big difference. So. So mine is, yeah, this, let me kind of go back. This is getting a little bit too heavy, I think. Ah, so maybe I'll try a, a bit lighter weight. I'll try, um, I'll try this, this bell and see if that makes a, a little nicer sound. Kat, how's yours going? Not well. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with it? Uh, because I, I think my wire is too small, so I, I just I just don't really it doesn't move right here. It's too small. I have to mm. make an extension. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah, and I think like with that as well, um, 
the the space of the um, the straw, like if it's going a little bit over the box, then it might you know be a little bit easier to move so it doesn't get caught on the end like that. So let's see. So here's um here's kind of a starting point. Um, it's very, very light. It's not quite making a great jingle bell sound yet. But like I said, this is something that now we can start to fine tune and adjust. We don't have so much time. So I wanna just, as we're continuing to build, I just wanted to show um, a couple other examples. And yeah, and Deanna asked what um, gauge of wire. Yeah, we're using 18 gauge uh, stainless steel wire. Um, it's pretty similar to what, um, what a like standard paper clip is made out of. And actually it's a, about the same, um, I don't know what's the word, like bendability. I don't know exactly if that's the right word or not, but you know, like some wire you can bend it and it will easy to bend and it stays in the right shape. So I think a, like a thick paper clip works pretty well too. So I just wanted to share a couple other examples um, in the last few minutes. Um, and, you know, and then maybe at the end we can see what, um, what other people are working on. So here's one that has a um, toilet paper tube as the base, the straw in the middle. And I decided to use a um, clear takeout lid as the, um, the sound making piece. So I just attached that with an extra wire and kind of had it go on the side. So let's see if we can hear this one. I like this one as well, because as it hits, this is actually flexible. So it changes the sound as it moves. Like after a few um, knocks, they're kind of moving in sync with each other. And so it changes how it's going. A totally different um, version of one that, that I made um, inspired by an artist that we worked with at the Exploratorium uh, is using a boba straw to um, make the sound. So I don't know how we can see this one, but so this one is a turtle. And basically I have this um, straw inside and the sound that it's making is when it just knocks against these little um, barbecue sticks. And because there's just four of these on the cam, it, you know, creates a pattern. So um, I made this cam, it's gonna be a bit hard to see, but this cam with four different uh, skewer sticks on it. Again, it could be really interesting to experiment with what if there's three of them? What if there's five of them? What if they're not a regular rhythm? Um, it could make a really different type of motion on here. The last uh, thing that I wanted to share is that it's also possible with these machines to motorize them. So um, now, now we're getting the afternoon sunlight here in Germany, uh, which is totally changing my Zoom setup. Uh, luckily it's about to go away in about three seconds. But um, so this is another version of one that I made. Again, it's uh, using a fruit basket as the base, a straw to hold the wire, to hold the crankshaft. But at the end, I took one of these little yellow gearbox motors and this is kind of a very simple way to attach it, but I just kind of bent the wire around, um, back around and put it in again. And, and that stays fairly well. So when the motor turns, um, my crankshaft will move. I'm gonna um, move my camera down and we can see if we can see this one. So um, I just have this works with just a single um, AA battery. I'm using a broccoli rubber band around the battery as a little holder. So if I put that on, ba, ba, ba. let's see. It's kind of not the best because the, um, the motor is almost louder than the machine. But um, let's see if you can see like, so basically this is the one that I was mentioning with this side of the takeout container where the um, dowel is just kind of rubbing against it like a washboard or something, um, something like that. Something else that we're interested in, although um, maybe this would be a uh, 
two hour workshop instead of a half an hour workshop. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I was inspired as well by, uh, by Frazier and by some other people who have been experimenting with programming these machines. So another thing, just uh, if you want to go a little bit further um, with these on your own, is to think about adding um, a, a servo motor in there. And so um, we, in our workshops with the Cabaret Mechanical Theater, we work a lot with um, the micro bit and um, you know, connecting it to these servo motors. So I could imagine having many of these automata and they could all um, you know, be programmed to move in different ways and be a band. We just have three minutes left, but um, I'm curious, maybe we could spend that time um, hearing from some people who have been working with us and tinkering along with us. Yay, uh, let's check out Loriano's, yeah. Awesome. Loriana, can you, um, can you say something about your machine, kind of how it works or? or... Uh, yes, I use uh, three paper clips the, about this this side. Awesome. A lot of <laughs> tape <laughs> to secure the mechanisms. Perfect. Um, the tube of a uh, pencil. Hmm. Wow. Cut. And That's cool. There, this is a cork. Uh huh. Here, a bell from an um, old. Clock. Oh, alarm clock. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I put, put the bell here and I have another bell. Uh huh. You can see. And well, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> very fun. Very fun. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Can you hold it up one more time so I can take a, a screenshot of the piece? Yeah. Awesome. Oops. Now I lost you. No worries, um, Sherry, you'll give me the photo. Um, I love, one of the things I love the most about doing these tinkering workshops online, of course it's a bit hard because we're not all in the same Maker fair table like we normally would be. But one thing that's really interesting to me is I get to see people using materials that I would have never expected. And like the, um, tube from the pen, that's a brilliant, uh, that's a brilliant holder for the crankshaft. And so I might steal that idea from you later on. Um, does someone else who is building could share what they're, what they're working on? I see Barb just turned her screen on. Yeah, Barb, can you share yours? And then maybe we'll see from, um, okay, yeah, cool. Oh, we can't hear you though. Or I can't hear you. I changed my audio settings. Can you hear me now? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, I was having computer problems. I didn't get you to do too much. But um, I've got this. And then I'm like, OK, what noisy things do I have around? I have a wine class sitting here. Just Yay. <laughs> uh, and it's fun to go one direction. I can kind of get a grindy Ooh, yeah. sound from it. Or the other way. <laughs> Yay. Beautiful. I want to play around with some metal straws that I've got too. That's awesome. Yeah, I um, thanks thanks for sharing. Um, I saw I, we were in a workshop where um, people were also doing different levels on the wine glass, like um, different amounts of liquid, um, and and that also could be really cool. Maybe the last one um, is it Laka or Laca? Uh, no, yes, you Lacasa Delsons. Sorry, I don't know what your name is. Um, Mir you Miriam. <laughs> Miriam, can you share yours? Yes, but awesome. I'm not sure that it no, is. Uh, if it's still in progress, I'm that's not sure okay. That it work. Yeah. Uh, no, it doesn't work. That's okay. It doesn't work yet. Can you say like a little bit about um, how like? what you might try next or um, yes. how you might change it, yeah? But um, this is heavy. Uh-huh. Cool. cool. Uh, <laughs> no worries. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't it work. I, think, I think you're on the way to doing it. Um, 
like I said, 20 minutes or half an hour is a really short time to work on yes. these materials. But um, the other good thing about these online workshops is that you can keep building and keep working um, even after the session is over. So um, I think Sherry put the link to um, our website, Cabaret Mechanic, uh, mm -hmm. Wonderful Idea Co. Oh. website, also our collaborators, the Cabaret Mechanical Theater. Um, we're running also different uh, workshops uh, where you can spend six weeks with us working and building and making automata. So then you have a little more time to uh, really get into it. But for this, I just wanted to experiment a little bit with uh, making sound automata with everyday materials. So thanks so much, everyone, for um, playing and building along with us. Well, thank you.